Today on Sports Card Investor, we're talking grading, we're talking SGC, we're talking collecting versus investing, and we're talking about the best pulls from the best packs. This and more during my interview with Chris G613. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies, and at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Sports card investors, I hope your weekend is going wonderful and I've got a little bit more entertainment to offer you as part of your weekend today. I've got a great interview with Chris G613. Chris G is a guy who opens packs on YouTube and Instagram. He's had his channels for a while. They're quite popular because he opens up a lot of really, really great packs and he's really excited and enthusiastic about the hobby and we have a great conversation. We talk about grading, we talk about SGC, we talk about the best cards he's ever pulled, we even talk about how he graded a very unique set of cards, the first person in the history of grading to grade this very unique set of cards, but a set of cards that you are very familiar with and may have yourself. So you'll have to see that in the interview, It's, it's a lot of fun. And folks, I wanted to let you know what is also a lot of fun. I am starting to get products in for my next members only live stream break, which is next Wednesday. It's coming up this upcoming Wednesday. We're talking a few days from now. This Wednesday is my next members only card break because I'm now doing these twice a month. And I just got this box of Prism first off the line football. So we are going Kyler Murray hunting first off the line style. These first off the line prism boxes, they've got four autographs in them. And by the way, all of these cards, 100% given away to my members during the live stream. So my members, I will be taking these four auto cards and the silvers and and the uh, various uh, shimmers and uh, that type of stuff that we pull out of that first out of the line box, giving them all to members who are in my live stream. I also, by the way, just got another box of Prism Basketball so we can go Zion hunting. And we're gonna do all of this during my live stream Wednesday night. If you sign up for my membership program by going to sportscardinvestor.com and clicking on the membership link, you will be signed up to be part of this live break to win your chance at winning any of these cards as long as you sign up by 8 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. Again, sportscardinvestor.com, click on the membership link. It's less than 10 bucks a month, less than 10 bucks for two live breaks a month, plus my card picks and all kinds of other entertainment. I would love to have you as part of it. All right, but let's get to this interview with Chris G613. We cover a lot of ground about the hobby, and I really think you're going to enjoy this. Chris G613 is a great personality. His real name, by the way, is Chris Gaden, and he is a, a really enthusiastic guy, someone who's got a lot of love for the hobby. You will see that in this interview. So without any further ado, let's bring in Chris. Hey, Chris, welcome to Sports Card Investor. Thank you for having me, Jeff. I appreciate you guys reaching out. Absolutely. Happy to have you on the show. So Chris G613, this has become a pretty popular YouTube channel, a pretty popular Instagram. I know you've been at it for a while, doing a lot of honestly great pack openings. I love seeing some of the cards you open. What inspired you to start this? Um, it's kind of something I stumbled upon. Um, I had a, a shop, a mechanic shop, a car shop that closed down the summer of 2016. Um, at the time I, I had a, a one-year-old child, so, I mean, she's five now. Um, and, uh, we were looking into, uh, whether we were getting home care for her or not. And after I found out the cost of child care and what type, what that would entail, uh, me and my wife decided that I'd stay home for the time being and, uh, and help raise my daughter. And that kind of just led me to, you know, nap time comes along, you're playing along on YouTube. And all of a sudden you start stumbling upon, you know, like your card rip or something like that. Um kind of reignited my fire. I, I've been a collector for, for a long time, um, especially when I was a kid, kind of stepped away from it, you know, when I got into college, uh, 98, 99, but still would, you know, the random once in a while type packs. Um, I remember coming home from the bar in like 2000 and seeing Don West on the late night shopping channel yeah, <laughs> screaming, <West>, <laughs> screaming about cards. 
I so I missed the Don West era because I was, uh, you know, I was a collector like you were when I was a kid. But then when I was in college and everything, I just I wasn't into cards at all. But man, I someone recently told me about Don West and I went back and watched some YouTube videos. So if you're out there, search for like Don West sports cards. It's classic, man. Some of these YouTube videos, this guy is up there hawking sports cards on these like TV shows, like a, a home shopping network type TV show. Call right now, get these cards. They're rare, they're unique. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh, he 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 definitely pushed out the sports cards. He, he he got me to whip my credit card out a couple times back then, and you know, <laughs> and and it's turned out well because some of that stuff was uh was basically a repack of the time. I know I bought some like, I I know I bought one thing. It was like uh, either a Dan Marino or a John Elway card from every year tops made from the rookie year on, and you're guaranteed to get at least one. And it was, I don't know, 50 bucks. So I, I don't even remember what it was at the time, but I remember he, he got me to buy one. And it had, I think, the instant replay rookie in it instead of the actual rookie card. <laughs> well, you know, 20 years oh, later, yeah. you 20 years later, you might have gotten your money back, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all in great shape. And it was just something that you just put away in, in the closet. You know, uh, yeah. I, I didn't sell for, for a very long time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. So, so you, you kind of got back into, you know, you kind of got, you've had that bug really all along, it sounds like in, in waves, but then 2016 was when you started, was that when you started your channel? No, it's not. Um, just, that's when I kind of stumbled back into like just learning about cards again. And even gotcha. then I, I, I wasn't really buying, I was just kind of paying attention to some rips on, every once in a while on YouTube. Uh, 2017, I think I, I don't know what, what transpired. I think I was on um, Craigslist or something and I saw a Walter Payton rookie get listed for a hundred bucks. And I remember thinking like, man, that was a big card when I was a kid, 1976 tops, Walter Payton rookie. And it looked great by the picture. So I, you know, I messaged the guy ended up being a, a police officer from, I think where Gronk actually is from, from Amherst, New York. And we met and, had a quick, you know, chat about cards real quick and, uh, and, uh, you know, made the exchange and I sent that, that Walter Payton, the PSA and it graded a six and was kind of lit my fire back, you know? So and that was the year Bellinger and, um, and Aaron judge and were, were rookies mm -hmm. for, for baseball. So there's a big, big chase on Aaron judge. Um, and so I, I was like kind of randomly buying some retail packs here and there, <clears throat> but, uh, just the, the, I don't know. It was really that Walter Payton that sparked it in where I started buying a lot that summer. And I think I, I still didn't start my channel yet. Uh, I just started buying a bunch, bunch of cards. I wasn't selling because I was a collector. Um, I had heard kind of like uh, horror stories about collectors kind of getting screwed over on eBay and stuff, how eBay really protects the buyer rather than the seller. And, you know, you always get scared of, selling a card that maybe it's not serial numbered and then they kind of scam you and get the wrong card back or want to return it for worse card or something, you know? So I never got into the selling. And then I think uh, 2018 came around. Uh, I'm a Bills fan, obviously. I knew that we were going to draft a quarterback that class and, and they talked about how great of a football class that was. And I'm like, man, I'm going to get some football cards this year. And you know what, what I'm noticing on these videos from, from other YouTubers is they're getting the most views on release day product. Mm -hmm. like, I'm in a perfect storm where I live. Dave and Adams is 15 minutes up the road oh, on the road gosh. I live on. That's scary. Oh, Dave I, and Adams is 15 yeah. minutes from you. Good, goodness gracious. I, <laughs> my, my wife would not be happy if Dave and Adams was 15 minutes from me. <laughs> we would be, we might have, we might have, we, we might not have the car anymore. We, <laughs> Exactly. So when I realized that, I'm like, man, I could really leverage this here. One, I'm home every day. I could get to Dave and Adams when they open 10, 11 in the morning, get a box of their brand new product and be the very first video out on YouTube. And so I kind of, I was still kind of scared. Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't that much of a put out in public type guy, you know, just do my own thing. And then you know, one of my, um, one of the YouTubers I was watching at the time, Rocket Cards 34, Taylor, uh, we did a trade. He pulled a Josh Allen card out of five or something. And uh, I sent him a bunch of cards. You know, we just kind of did a trade. And 
he was like, man, he's like, Chris, your collection is amazing. You really should start a channel and just show it off. And I'm like, man, I don't know. I, I, I can't do all that. He's like, no, you should just do me a favor. He's like, just, just do a little video by yourself. You don't even have to show anybody just to, just to kind of get used to it. And I, I remember being scared and nervous, even though I was never going to share the video, but I did it. And I was like, man, this is, this is easy. And with Dave and Adams right down the road, nobody's stopping me. I can be the first guy out there. I, I'm going to do this. And then I started, I, I started watching release dates, started getting out there, getting the first boxes. Um, I have a theory that if you are buying product on that very first wave of uh, delivery, that the product hits are, are in that first wave because it makes sense. If, if you're, it's your company, you want to get excitement going you want people to see those amazing polls. Hmm. At least that's my, that's my theory is it that first wave of product is, is your best product. Ever. That is an interesting <laughs> theory. Wow. That's interesting. I will say this. I, you know, obviously I have no, I have no idea if that's true or not, but it, it, it's, it's certainly an interesting theory. I will say this. I have had really good luck opening up first off the line boxes and, you know, first off the oh, yeah. line, you're supposed to get, you know, like the one additional card that's like, it depends on the first off the line. Some Sometimes you maybe you get two extra cards that aren't in the regular. But it seems like every time I've opened up a first off the line box, not only have I gotten those two extra cards, but I've gotten several more pretty significant hit cards in the box that I don't think I would have gotten in just a normal hobby box. It, it seems a little heavy. No, I, I agree. Um, that I, that was one thing that, that came up when I started all this. I was like, well, man, this is a first off the line product. And and back in 2018, it was easy to get. When, when 2018 Prism Football came out, they released. I got a, a half a case uh, that yeah. first day with, with no problem. I remember I got six boxes, $720 for six hobby boxes first off the line. Yeah. Um, no problem. Got them in. And I was the very first video on YouTube. And I think that kind of catapulted me because that first box, when I ripped it, had 42 misprints. And I remember oh, wow. I, I, opened, I opened up the pack and, and I looked at the card and I happened to flip it over and, and it wasn't the same guy on the back. You know? And I oh, kind of wow. was like, what is going on here? And I'll flip it through the packs and it's like nine out of the, I don't even remember, 12 cards out of you know, each pack were, were wrong. They were, they were misprints. Wow. <laughs> and so that video got steam. I think somebody shared it to blow out forums. Um, and, and I really started getting a lot of steam. Of course, everybody's, you know, putting their own opinion whether or not I should like these cards or, or not. I was upset as a consumer. You know, at the time, I was looking for, for something I wanted. I've never really been into error cards or anything like that. You know, growing up in the 90s, it was pretty common to come across mm -hmm. error cards. And some of them were chase cards or not. But to me, that, that's not my thing. I, I'm with you. I, I've never been. I, w I was into the air cards back in the you know 80s and 90s because as a kid they were like, oh my god, you can get a bat that's got a bad word on the bottom of it. You know that was like the greatest thing ever. But but like no, today man, I don't want air cards. Like print your you know come on Panini with your quality control now. Like seriously, do a good job of printing your cards. And by the way, print them centered. Like goodness gracious, how are we in the year 2020? And there's like, you know, some of the prism this year is just, you know, an optic as well. It's just, some of it is just like, how is this possible in the year 2020 that we're, we're printing cards? I mean, what's funny too, by the way, like if you go back and look at the PSA 10 ratio on 2013 prism, um, and I, I look at that one a lot because that's got, that's got Giannis in it. Uh, and then you look at the PSA ratio on like 2019, like they were printing the cards better in 2013. Like the Giannis cards had a higher gem mint ratio than the, than the Prism sets have the last few years. How is that possible? How does technology advance and years go by and, and actually the, the, you know, centering quality and the printing quality gets worse? <laughs> no, I'm with you there. I, it, nothing kind of <laughs> burns my skin is to see like a gold out of ten for these for these oh. really hot prism cards, and, and especially an optic too. And their their up down centering is just off the wall horrible. And you're like, oh, I can't grade it. I can't do nothing. No, that's now not now good. the card's not really that desirable to me because that's just I don't know. I've <laughs> I got my own things that I that I look for in a card. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. Yeah. 
Cool. So you're, so you, and, and by the way, for folks who haven't seen your channel or your Instagram, we don't get to see your face very often. You, you, you're the, the camera is normally pointed at the card. So this is a rare opportunity here to actually get to see Chris G613. <laughs> people, people see me before I've done a few face reveals. Um, I've been to the last two nationals. Uh, you know, I meet a lot of people there. Um, amazing time. I'm, I'm pretty disappointed that this year's are getting postponed, but at the same time, pretty excited to see what you and your team put together for the virtual uh, sports Thank card. Thank you. Yeah. We are excited. We are excited about that. And just for for folks out there, um, we you know we like you. Extremely sad the nationals getting postponed. Was super excited to get to meet a lot of the viewers of the show there this year. We were going to do some events and parties. Um, but uh, we decided, my team at Sports Card Investor decided we're going to do the virtual, which is going to be the same five days that the National was supposed to be. And it's going to be a totally online live streaming card show. We're going to try to get a lot of the dealers who are going to be at the National on the stream uh, to show off the cards that we're going to sell at the National. And we're going to have them all for sale in real time. So should be a great event. So certainly uh, uh, stay tuned for that in late July. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. That's, uh, it is my favorite time of the year. Um, I hadn't gotten around to booking my, my uh, accommodations yet for, for this year. So that was at least one thing I didn't have to worry about canceling. Uh, I did have to cancel one previous vacation in March for my daughter's birthday, but I wasn't looking forward to canceling another. <laughs> Well, hopefully, I mean, you know, they're hoping to get the national back in December. Um, hopefully, they hopefully by then we can do that in person. Um, but in the in the meantime, we'll try to make the virtual the next best thing. Definitely. So, with all these packs you've opened, you know, over the last few years on your YouTube and whatnot, what is what's what's the best card that you've pulled out? What's your favorite card that you pulled out? Pulled out. The very best pull, honestly, um, it was out of 2018 Heritage High Number. Um, I, I picked up it was. Again, just one of those, you know, I'm going to pick it up for, for new content on my channel. Um, baseball is, is not the highest uh, card in my collection. I do collect baseball because I, I like cards. I like all, all cards. Um, but it, I'm more, more of a football, basketball guy. Um, started, you know, doing some research back then on it and, and realizing that these, the heritage and especially the heritage high number were, were very sought after. And not only that, but the the real ones signatures are on card, yeah. and they're not and they're not neat. guaranteed. Yeah, the red, and then the you get the red ink ones that have the that are numbered and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean those are those are pretty cool cards. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yep. So I so I opened the box. I, I bought the box on a Friday. I remember I had posted some pictures of my daughter holding it and everything, and I didn't get a chance to open it until that Monday, just for you know life happens. And I remember going through the box. My daughter's asleep. She, I, that's when I usually would film my videos. I would make sure she was taking a nap. I'd have a couple hours then to, to do my thing. And uh, so she's sleeping. I'm ripping this box. And all of a sudden, I see this the redemption start to peek out. So I kind of set it aside, finish opening the box, go back to it, pull down the redemption. And um, I actually have it right here if you want to see it. I found this card right here, Cunha. which is the nice, nice Red Cunha. Real yeah. One Special Edition. I did grade it because I think that this is perfect. <laughs> and then <laughs> here's the card. Um, it did get a True Gem Plus. Great. Uh, I'm not sure you can see that too well, but uh, it is a red ink, and uh, it's, it's one of my one of my higher valued cards. Uh, I couldn't believe it when I pulled it. <laughs> I had nobody to talk to or share it with because I was in a garage by myself, nobody, nobody around. And I was just like, ah, what do I do? I called my wife and she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I just had a great pull. I called the card shop. I was like, thank you. I think this is like a $2,000 card is what the unused redemption was, was comping for at the time. Yeah. And I got that redemption within like eight days from top. So it was, it was super fast. I immediately shipped that out to BTS to get graded. And I was pretty happy about that. And probably, probably uh, considerably more now, I would imagine in terms of value. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's a, uh, it's definitely a collector's piece. It's, it's something that, uh, that I kind of want to sit on. Um, he, he's young. He's got a lot of raw talent. Um, he's got a lot of hype behind him. I, I know there's some question about his, uh, his motivation. You know, he's given up a few times, but I, I think that he'll learn from those mistakes. And, um, you know, I have, I have friends that are, that are more invested in baseball that I kind of conferred with. And they're like, this is one of those cards you want to stash. This, this yeah. is, this is not, this isn't just a regular rookie auto. This is, this is one of the cards that you want to I would agree with that. I like I like Acuna, young player. Um, Braves are a good team. Uh, they're a young team. They got you know they have potential. 
Uh, heck, he almost got 40-40 last year. That hasn't been done in a while in baseball. Yep. Um, you know, maybe he'll get it this year. Uh, I like him. You know, a lot of, lot of reasons to like him for sure. Um, so, yeah, I agree. It'll be, it'll be fun to see where that goes. Cool. So that's that's yeah, that's pretty. probably the best card you pulled. Um, but I know you've done some pretty fun things as well. You are, I know you're proud of, in your PC, you actually have a graded Panini Redemption Points rainbow. Is that right? Can you tell us about that? That? I do. I do. Um, I, obviously, when you start watching, when you, when you fall down the sports card YouTube rabbit hole, you're going to see people pull Panini Points. And nine times out of ten, you got a bad reaction. They're mad. They're upset. Yes, I meet. I've done it on this channel. People have watched me pull Panini points and go Panini. Arr! And I and I I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, man, are these that bad? I I, I don't know. I, I I didn't make up my mind yet. So I I remember going out and buying a mega box of football that was pretty much almost guaranteed to get one. And I think it was the old 2017 optic or 2018 optic where. If you bought a mega box, you're most likely getting panini points as one of your hits. <laughs> and so I did that and I got the points and I kind of redeemed them. I put them in the system just to see what, what was out there. And there wasn't too much. But then I found out that, uh, that there are some other exclusive cars like, you know, white sparkle packs that right. you can't get anywhere else. I'm like, man, these things, I'm like, I need, I need to focus on this. A lot of people are, this is, this is like an irritation too. So if I could focus on that, this is, this is good for me, that this is going to be an easier transaction. This is going to be, I'm going to take your trash and turn it into my treasure. And, and that's what I did. I, I knew then I told one of my buddies, I'm like, next time I pull panini points on camera, I'm magging them. I'm pull, I'm ripping a brand new magnet. I'm putting it in there and I'm showing it off. Like this is the greatest thing in the world. And when I did it, I did it in a video. I did it in my um, 2018 obsidian video. And, and it, it, the video is amazing. If you haven't seen that video, look it up because I see the panini. I open up the pack. It's a one pack product and I immediately see the panini points. So I, so I do my thing. I, I mag it up, do my thing. Right after that, I pulled a one on one Russell Wilson out of the what? same pack. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Now that's funny. Cause I, I would have assumed I would have been, if it's a one pack product and you're getting panini points, that's normally a bad sign that that pack's going to be horrible. But, oh, that's great that you got a one-on-one -on -one Russell Wilson. Maybe Panini felt bad for you. Maybe they were like, oh, we got to give him some Panini points. But we're going to give him a one-on-one, -on -one too, here. One of one, too. So that did that did lead me to, to okay, well, now, I now you know, people are, are, high, are catching on to my mag your points, you know, hashtag. You know, what, what can I do to, to take that one step further? And, and then I did. I, I, I went and I, I sent them in. I... I got them graded. I, I kind of had to fight with BGS a little bit. They, they, um, the regional sales manager comes to our LCS and, you know, I had a discussion with him and he's just like, what are you, what are you grading these for? Like, no, they're not worth anything. What, what are you doing? I'm like, to you, they're not worth anything. Nobody else is doing this. I'm going to do this. I'll have it. Can, can you do it? Sure. Are you? Probably not. So if anything, my Panini points rainbow is a one one Nobody else has it. Can anybody do it? Sure. You're going to have a hard time, especially trying to find this one right here, which is the 15,000 point um, redemption. Or, uh, wow, look 15, at that. 000 points. <laughs> That's like a four to $500 card. Uh, Panini randomly inserted that into um, retail basketball, <laughs> like r literally like the, the draft picks, the contenders draft picks. They put this in, they put this into um, uh, the Chronicles basketball, what they considered their low end product. That's where they were there. That's where they were finding those. And I went ahead, like I said, and I graded the whole thing. <laughs> I have every single one. Now, how do they all grade out? That last one, I think was what an eight five. How do these all grade out here? <laughs> Eight five is going to be the highest. Uh, these things are okay. horrible. This one here is a, a six five. So what, what? What? How does it get a six five? What's going? Was the centering bad? Can can BGS not even? Can Panini not even center their redemption points? Points. <laughs> they're chipped. They're not taken care of well. They're. they're oh. I mean, they're, they're just thrown in there. Nobody. Nobody takes a, uh, care oh. of these cards. So, <laughs> so they're beat up. Nobody really cares. <laughs> Here's the greatest thing. I, I I can only imagine when Beckett got this in the mail. And they were like, how the heck are we going to put these into our pop report system? 
Like where, where, like where do they go? What year do they go to? Like their whole pop report system is designed by like year and sports and sets and player name. And you're here with freaking reward points. Like they're probably like, what am I, but where do these go into our system? The, the great thing about Beckett's um, online app system is if you download Beckett's app, and when you do your submissions, you have them email you personally, you know, the, the process results, uh, which is the way my LCS does it. Even though it's like a group submission, I get personally emailed when they receive, when the grading process is done, and when they're being mailed back. Well, if you go back into it, there's a section where you can look at your orders, and you can, you can dial down, you can drill down, you can find your, your grades, click them, they'll show pop reports, things like that, uh, how many cards graded higher or lower. Well, you can do that on each one of these Panini points. It shows the subgrades and everything, but it does not have any, <laughs> any like sub file that it's going in. So there's no other, like there is no pop for it. It, it is what I have and that's it. <laughs> hmm. There you go. Now what you got to do is you got to take that entire collection and you got to ship them to PSA and do a crossover. Do a crossover with PSA, say, I'm not happy with how BGS graded these. Grades were crap. I want PSA to regrade these, take them out of the slabs. Re That'd be great. Great. Well, I have, I have another 15,000 point right now at SGC. Uh, what oh, SGC? There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're on the, to we're on the topic of grading. I know you, I know you've done quite a bit of grading and this is, so you just mentioned SGC. That's been a hot topic in the industry recently, right? We've got people SG, it's the rise of SGC. People are sending cards to SGC. It's been, it's been this incredible trend the last, um, yep. really about 30 or 45 days here where SGC is really caught in fire. What are your, what are your thoughts, first of all, on SGC? Uh, they grow more and more on me every day. Um, they kind of, first it started off with the black slabs. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Elite Co. 3, Nolan Klein. I got a chance to meet him last year at the National. Super, super personal guy. I, I think he's very, very smart when it comes to cards. Uh, he knows his stuff. Uh, he's been doing this very, very long time, and he's been doing it at a high level for a very long time. Um, he, he, I think, is kind of one of the pioneers to really dive headfirst into this new SGC realm. Uh, there's another guy on Instagram, Investicar, they've kind of dealt it as well to help push their popularity. But the black slabs have really grown on me, it's kind of like the black mags. I didn't like them at first, but you get the right card in, in there and a black mag, and they just shine really well. And not only that, the service is there and when you can't when you're submitting to PSA and it's taking six to eight months on a, on a bulk order on a 30 to 45 day order I mean that's gonna that's gonna leave some people wanting and I, I'm, I'm in that boat right now I have two orders of PSA I have a 32 card order that is already received and logged in since March 11th for a 30 day service order um, is not even to the grading level yet so I imagine maybe by July, August, I should get that 30 day order that's been long since March. I also have 142 cards in an order at PSA right now as well that has not even been logged yet. So that one's going to be even longer on a 30 day order for that. In the meantime, uh, April 29th, I shipped, or no, April 21st, I had 31 cards sent out to SGC. Um, they're all my old Michael Jordan cards. Um, some good condition, some bad condition, and that's purpose. I, I want to see how hard do they grade, you know, a really bad condition card. I've got a Jordan second year that is in horrible shape that I've had for years, and, uh, and I want to see how bad they're going to really, really hit this card. I expect it to be a two, three. I'm okay with that. Um, I also have a lot of uh, little real crispy Jordans that I sent in that same order just because I want to see – I want to see these early, or late 90s, early 2000s come back with some 10s. So that, that's going to be nice too. And then uh, last week, I went ahead and shipped uh, SGC another 129 cards <laughs> just because I want my, my, my orders to pop almost consecutively. I, I know I'm going to get the 31 card order from SGC first. I'm hoping after that I get my 32 card order from PSA. I imagine after that I should get my 129 card order from SGC and then probably down the road, I'll get that big order from PSA again. But in the meantime, that's going to give me tons of inventory to start uh, to sell, to, to build up my, my PayPal account again and maybe get another really big piece of card. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, this is very, very interesting. Now, in fairness to PSA, 
uh, you know, they they did have to close, right, for for COVID. Like they actually had to close their offices for a while due to California mandate. SGC, to my knowledge, never closed their offices due to the nope. you know business rules in Florida being different. So that has given SGC a leg up. Despite that, I agree with you that PSA is horribly slow, unreasonably crazy slow. BGS has become more slow as well, um, you know, than they used to be. Um, and I, I don't understand why these companies can't keep up. I mean, I guess it's hard to hire people off the street to do grading. I guess it's a specialty, but you would think that a company with the resources and the size of PSA would be able to have a thorough enough training and recruiting program to be able to quickly scale by hiring people, training them, figuring out how to segment the work so that you know newer people could still be contributing to the workflow and get cards through more quickly. That just seems like a no brainer and they're absolutely gonna lose market share to SGC as a result of this. And if I were running PSA, that would be a pretty scary place to be. Um, I would be making immediate changes to uh, increase our supply chain through through our organization. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know why they're not doing it. But I will say I'm also, though, on the other hand, worried that all of this interest in SGC, where people like yourself are flooding SGC now with tens of thousands of cards, that SGC is going to end up in the same boat as PSA and BGS, where it's just, they can't keep up with the demand, they don't have enough people, they can't hire quickly enough. We'll see. Hopefully not. I think that I think that having the three grading companies is great for the hobby, but you know we'll have to obviously see how that plays out. I agree. the The tidal wave of cards going to these companies is not going to get smaller. Every day, there's more and more cards going to all three companies. That it's not going to get smaller. If they don't, if they don't address this service issue, it's just going to snowball. And maybe there'll be a fourth company down the road that that comes in and says, "Hey, these guys are slacking. We're going to pick it up, and we're going to we're going to take advantage of this." So that you you never know. But I. Um, I'm going to continue to use all three. I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, I'll probably scatter it out just like what I'm doing now so that I kind of, you know, have my own uses for each, each one. Maybe I'll send stuff I want to see in Black Slabs to SCC. You know, I do like my, my older vintage PC cards to be in a, P, in a PSA slab. So I'll still use them. But understanding that I'm probably not going to see this card for a year, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so one question I was going to ask is, do you, how, how are you, with all three grading cards as options, all three grading companies as options, how are you going to differentiate? Like if you, if you had a pile of cards in front of you, uh, what would be your decision factor on which cards you're going to send to PSA, which ones to BGS, and which ones to SGC? Right now, I, I decide I'm, I'm going by service. Um, the only stuff that's going to PSA further for me right now is going to be my personal collection stuff, stuff that I really think... I really want that that extra oomph that PSA will give that card with their slab and possibly a gem mint grade. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna really I'm I'm, uh, I'm a fan of SGC. They they won me over every day. I see their slabs and I, and I like them more and more. Uh, I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, I do use BGS when when the the local card shop has the has the event because we get the the super bulk rate pricing, which is, which is cheap. And, and I'll take advantage then it's, it's better than any, any pricing that I can get personally. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll use them the next time that that happens, which I don't foresee for a while. So I, I probably won't be using BGS until the next time they come to the, the card shop. I like, I like BGS personally for patch cards. Um, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's really hard to get a patch card uh, to gem mint at PSA. Um, you know, there's typically some type of imperfection in a patch card. Oftentimes, the little window where the patch shows underneath, there may be a little ding in that. You've got more more edges and surface areas that could have issues uh, when you have a patch card than you do with a normal card. Um, right. And so I personally, for those, knowing that they're going to be difficult to gem in at PSA, I like BGS. I like having the subgrades in that case. Uh, first of all, I think you got a better shot at a 9.5 than a PSA 10. And then second of all, uh, you got the subgrades to work with, which give a little bit more indicator on a card like that, where there's a lot more complexity to the grading. Um, right. Whereas with with an you know with an everyday card PSA for me, um, and you know in terms of SGC, I, I haven't I don't personally have any SGC cards, but I'm sure I'm going to be buying some in the near future, and I'll probably be sending some off to them to grade in the near future. 
I'm curious about them just like you are. And we've, in my Market Movers data tool, we have now started to build in SGC into a lot of cards in the tool. So the, the free form lookup in the tool, the chart any card supports SGC grades five through 10 min and 10 pristine. And then in a lot of the more popular cards on the popular cards charts, we've started adding SGC as grading options. It's gonna be really interesting to see the value of SGC cards and how that starts trending against BGS and PSA as time goes on. Exactly. Exactly. The main the main sales I'm seeing from from SGC right now are just Zions. Um, yeah. Th- yeah. That's really all I'm seeing going through. But but again, I I feel that that's because this is still the infant stages. I, I feel like right now that they probably have who knows tens of thousands of cards that are in process in their facility that are going out to 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 collectors to dealers to sellers, and you're gonna see. You're going to see a wave turn probably over the next month or two where you're going to see just as many black slabs on, on eBay and everywhere else as you do with the uh, as you do the BGS and the PSA. It's going to be fascinating to watch. And that's honestly, that's, you know, my, I love my Market Movers data tool because it gives you those graphs in terms of what's happening in real time. And I think that this next 30, 60, 90 days is going to be a fascinating time to watch SGC prices and how they really, where they really find their place in the market compared to yeah. PSA and BGS and how that changes over the course of the next 90 days. Definitely. Yeah, cool. Well, hey, I know you've got, Chris, you got some other cards in your PC. Uh, when, you, when you flip the camera around, I saw that there were some other cards back there. You want to give us a, a, a little tour of some of your other favorite cards you own? Absolutely, absolutely. Let me, uh, let me take a look here. So you got some more. All righty. <laughs> of course, this is my, one of my favorite uh Jordan second year cards. This one here, I did submit myself. It is a PSA nine, if I can get that to show right. <laughs> um, this I got in a trade. Uh, I am on a Facebook group. Uh, I do support Brothers and Cards Repack Service. Uh, you know, I'm a friend. I'm a friend of theirs. Um, I do like their their service. They, they give people that can't get hobby packs um, a chance at getting you know a taste of different products for a reasonable price. Well, in their in their Facebook group, they they allow you know people to chat. Um, one of their customers said, "Hey, my dad was at a a." Um, a vintage uh, a thrift store and found some old basketball packs and you'll never believe he found an 87 flare pack for you know 50 cents a dollar found everything this was the only pack he pulled his card out of it and as soon as i saw it i'm like i've got to trade for that i don't, I don't care i don't care i gotta get this card we I, I think i ended up getting uh 50 bucks in this card and i gave him one of my six boxes of the first off the line 2018 prism football so mm-hmm. I, I think i made out in the deal this was over a year ago today this card is definitely four digits <laughs> so uh th- this one's staying in my pc there um of course i, I did do a, a jordan search in one of my videos where i went looking for a 86 fleer uh, Michael Jordan rookie, just kind of like uh, LA Beast did. Um, got some. Uh, I got a couple packs off eBay. Most likely they were searched and and uh, and resealed, which is whatever. But you you live and learn, and you got to make mistakes to to not make mistakes going forward. Well, because of that video, um, a viewer reached out to me and uh, and said, "Hey, listen, you know, a buddy of mine's clean out his garage. His dad passed away." has a full set of 86 Fleer basketball. He's like, you're the first guy that I, that I thought of. Um, I, I know that you've always talked about that on your channel, that th- this is my holy grail card. This is what I've always chased as a kid. I've been a huge Bulls fan when I, when I was younger. And uh, he's like, this is your opportunity. Well, I, I didn't know him. So, of course, I was nervous. And, you know, this is not a, a small purchase at all. So I had, I had to b- build that relationship with him, kind of work back and forth with, within a few weeks. And uh, we worked out a deal. I ended up purchasing the whole set. It only came with this one graded. Um, I took 15 cards with me to Chicago National, including the sticker. The sticker graded a, a gem mint, or a near mint eight, which is very nice for that card to be raw. Um, four of the cards did grade a PSA nine out of that set, uh, which I have right here as well. And I was pretty happy with that too. This was all from the Chicago National. Uh, Doc Rivers, PSA nice. nine. Um, we got Spud Webb, one of the shortest dunkers ever. PSA yeah, that's nine. Yeah, that's a great card. It Isaiah Thomas, PSA nine, and then Akeem the Dream. Oh, there you go. That's a good one right there. That's a good one to grade a nine. Very nice. Very nice. And these would have all graded PSA tens, but because these are legit and they were in binders, you could see the staining along that top edge of every single card. 
that is the only thing wrong with these cards is that yellowing you see along the very top edge. There mm. is no whiting along the borders. All the corners are crisp. These are centered perfectly. And I, I really thought they had chances at 10, but the, they do mark off for the stains on the back. And that's the only reason why these didn't. So I, I turned a $1,400 investment into, gosh, this has got to be a $5,000 or more set at this point sure. today. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And I see you got a I see you got a Josh Allen back there. I know you're you're a Buffalo guy, so you're a Josh Allen guy right now. We talked about that a little bit. Biggest biggest hit I've ever hit in a in a break. Um last year I, I got lucky. Uh I, I was I was able to secure two boxes of National Treasures NBA first off the line. That's a Luca Trey year. Seven hundred and fifty dollars a box they released on Panini's app. I got two of them. I don't know how it happened with a mess up at checkout. I was nervous. So I was shaking. I remember double clicking the, the checkout button. Next thing I know, I had two emails in my, in my email saying I had two orders. I checked my credit card. They charged me twice. I said, this is a godsend and I don't care. As soon as the boxes came in, flipped them online for five grand total. And then I spent the whole season chasing pretty much this card. Uh, I bought into every flawless break I could find. Um, every National Treasures break. National Treasures, I didn't do too well, but uh, in the very last flawless break I got into, I even tried to, to get my buddy to buy the Bills spot. It was, it was right around 200 bucks. He's like, no, nah, I'm going to pass. I'm like, yeah, I can't let this spot go. 19 cards in, I still didn't hit anything. The very last card that was pulled was this. I went screaming through my house. I woke up my daughter. My wife's looking at me like I'm a crazy madman, but it's a one-on-one. It does have his Go Bills uh, inscription on there. It is a booklet. It is out of a flawless, which is the highest MSRP product that they, they issue. And uh, I, this isn't going anywhere. I, I have it on eBay, but it's the I don't want to sell it price. Nobody's going to pay crazy money, and I don't really care. It's mine. <laughs> That's a beautiful card. That is a That is a really, really sweet card. Congratulations on that. I'm sure that was absolutely amazing. Here's, here's another good one. A good friend of mine on, on Instagram, the card killer. Uh, I, I've met him personally. We're, we're good friends. He decided to make me um, unprovoked a, a custom Chris G613 Panini points card. It's all made out of other refractors, like all these refractor pieces he literally cut out of other cards. Uh, he did put some gold leafing on it to make it a one-on-one, but an artist friend of mine and, and definitely somebody that I, that I like to pr promote. <laughs> That's awesome. Very, very cool. Congratulations. <laughs> Those are really cool cards. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. I appreciate that. Oh, not a problem. So let's, uh, I, I know you've got some, uh, you've been, you've been a collector. You're, you're maybe a, a little bit of an investor at this, at this point. I know you kind of got some thoughts on the collector investor thing, which is a hot thing amongst some people. Some people, honestly, some people like myself kind of look at it and go, that's silly. Why can't you be a collector and an investor and you know, whatever, but some, it's very polarizing and there's, you know, a camp of collectors over here that don't get along with investors and a camp of investors over here. What are your, what are your thoughts on the whole collector investor thing? Uh, collectors don't like investors because collectors say investors are pushing the, this false uh, inflation of sports cards. I don't see it that way. I, I, I see it as they are capitalizing on opportunity and why not? This is our time as collectors to shine. This is why my mom told me, "Don't I'm not I'm never gonna throw out your sports cards, kid. Keep them in boxes, put them away. I'm always gonna keep them for you." This was something that my mom told me. I I remember looking through price guides as a kid and always pointing to that 52 tops mantle, saying, "Mom, this card." Right? She's like, "Yeah, I had two of them. They're somewhere at your great grandmother's house." I tore up my great grandmother's house looking for those 52 mantles when I was a kid. Never found my mom's sports card collection. But I know that my mom said that she's never going to, you know, get rid of mine. I kept mine. And this is, this is the time for us to shine. Now, now I have all this inventory. It is all in great shape. I, I kept them. I didn't mess with them. You know, I kept them in boxes and stuff like that. And so why, why not? Should, why shouldn't I, uh, um, capitalize on, on this opportunity? So, I see what investors are doing and that's fine. I, I, I think that collectors shouldn't look at this as a, as a negative. They should look at it as a positive. You should, you should befriend these investors. These are the guys that want to spend money on cards. Well, guess who has the inventory? We do. <laughs> so if we have that inventory, most investors aren't afraid of grading at all. So they, they're looking for pristine condition cards and something that sure that there's a little bit meat on the bone. 
everybody can win here. <laughs> everybody. I agree. I agree. hundred percent, hundred percent. And investors need collectors too, because investors, you know, if, if, a, if a card goes up in value, you eventually need to sell that card back to a collector. You know, it's like if investors yeah. selling cards to investors is only going to go so far up the ladder, you know, and then if investors eventually kind of your last sale kind of needs to be to a collector to make that whole ladder right. work. Yep, of course. So, yeah, I mean, everyone needs everyone. We just we just got to all get along, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cool, Chris. This has been a this has been a, a good conversation. I appreciate all the ground we've covered. Um, any last thoughts that you want to kind of put out there for our audience on anything? Um, just just have fun. Uh, there's a lot of there. Of course, there's always bad stuff going on in the hobby, but but be vigilant. Be smart. Do your do your research. Um, yeah. I, when I first came back to the hobby, I bought some some counterfeit cards because I didn't really know what I was looking for. You know, all that stuff's going to happen. And, and as long as you're smart about it, don't don't fall for the the fear of missing out, the FOMO. You know, do do your research. Um, stick to stick to the the staples of card collecting. If you stick to your prisms, your optics, your selects, something that has a rainbow involved, that's that's where you're going to find some Easter eggs stuff. You know, different uh different parallels that maybe not everybody knows about, but you know, collectors collect rainbows. And if you have that piece of that rainbow that maybe only five exists, guess what? You're a pretty important figure now. <laughs> So that I mean that that's the main thing is you just gotta stick to the staples and uh, and not be afraid and to to make a mistake because you're gonna you're, you're gonna invest in somebody that's not gonna do well that's gonna get hurt and, and it happens but if you're having fun and maybe you're looking for for cards that have eye appeal that that's a big thing to me um, if a card has eye appeal I don't really care about the rest uh, I just know it's it's a cool card it's got really strong eye appeal maybe it's you know super low numbered those are all things to protect yourself as an investor that if it's overproduced things like that that that'll lead more towards a, a uh, uh, the price is going down where if it's only out of five or out of ten and maybe it is one of those rainbow colors you're good you're set you're always gonna have interest there even if they're not a good player anymore they're, Collectors collect everything. There's there's a guy that collects that obscure player that nobody's ever heard about because maybe he was his neighbor one day. You know, nobody knows. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Maybe maybe he lives next to the next Michael Jordan. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> cool, Chris. Well, hey, uh, people can connect with you on Instagram, Chris G six one three on Instagram, and also Chris G six one three on YouTube. Am I correct on that? Yep, Chris G six one three collectibles. I put on my YouTube. I just to try to make sure that people that know I'm I'm about a collectibles. But that's it. Yeah, that's and how you can six, get hold of me. Six one three is that the is that the Buffalo area code or where's six one three from? It's my birthday. Your birthday. There you go. Hey, you got a birthday coming up soon. Happy birthday! A little bit in advance here. <laughs> Appreciate that. Good stuff, Chris. Thanks for joining Sports Card Investor. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my interview with Chris G613. Please give him a follow on YouTube and Instagram. He is a great guy, isn't he? That was a fun interview. And go to sportscardinvestor.com. Sign up for this live member break. As I said, first off the line, Prism Football, Prism Basketball, all kinds of great stuff. This is just some of it. There's a lot more than that. I'm going to be giving to my members Wednesday night. Uh, and if you sign up for my membership program, less than 10 bucks a month between now and Wednesday, you will be part of that live break. Go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on the membership tab in the main menu bar. Please also give my channel a subscribe. Hit the little bell icon on YouTube. I certainly appreciate it. Thanks so much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you back soon with my next episode. Take care.